Nielsen has been around for many years, at least 50 years. And um, I know it's been very successful in transitioning to the next generation. Uh, I believe we're undergoing a great change in research and the types of data streams and the types of way that consumers use media. How is Nielsen adapting? That's a great question, because um, this is a, a time of great change um, in the media landscape, most of which Nielsen measures. So, um, you know, we definitely are in a situation where, you know, people talk about changing the the, the wheels on the bus while the bus is, is speeding ahead, and I guess we're trying to, um, you know, change the the speedometer, the tachometer, um, while the bus is speeding along and the whole landscape around the bus um, is changing. So I think everything that Nielsen measures is changing rapidly and we're trying to keep up with that. We're trying to capture, if you're talking about television viewing, we're trying to capture television viewing wherever and whenever it occurs and those possibilities are continuing to expand. Um, so um, it is a real challenge and of course you've got the whole um, trend of internet video and um, how that's, um, how we're going to measure that and um, combine that with uh, our other measures of video viewing, um, not to mention, you know, all the other media platforms and devices that compete for the consumer's time. So that is just a little summary of the challenge. And, um, and what's happening at the company now is I think that um, the company is making a major concerted effort um, to both capture all of that usage, all of that media behavior, and then integrate, integrate it um, into some combined measures that make sense. Um, so um, yes, we have the, the TV and PC initiative where we're going to be combining, um, we're going to be coming up with um, a single combined rating um, for TV shows that are um, uh, appear on the internet and on television in the same form and with the same commercial load. Um, so that has been a big um, initiative at Nielsen. Um, we're seriously studying social media and trying to see what impact that has on other media use. Um, and um, we are, uh, you know, there's, there's a big push here to combine the buy side of the company, what we call the buy side, which is the consumer data and the consumer research with what we call the watch side, which is all the media usage data that we have. I mean, that's also, I think, the holy grail of trying to see how um, those two um, sets of measures um, interconnect and how one affects the other and how one drives the other. So I think there's a big push here for integration um, and, and also to become as granular as we can. So there's, there's breadth and then there's, there's depth. Um, granular in the sense of um, you know, like everyone, well, like some other um, uh, parts of the industry, you know, we're also looking at set-top box data and trying to figure out how we can use that to help measure television viewing more accurately um, and in more detail. Um, and then down to things like the use of neuroscience. You know, so we have a, a part um, ownership of uh, NeuroFocus, which is one of the, the, you know, the big neuroscience companies. So trying to get beneath the, um, the surface of what the eye can see when it comes to um, media use and consumer behavior. And, and I think trying to become um, more of a consulting kind of resource to our clients rather than just a provider of data. Joe, where do you see the media industry in like the next five to 10 years? Okay, well, if I were gonna look in my crystal ball, um, I think, I mean, first of all, you know, we all know things are changing so rapidly. Um, and so it's kind of hard to project out and things have sort of emerged on the landscape out of seemingly nowhere and suddenly become very important. 
Um, you know, my thinking is, you know, for a while, everybody was very excited about 3D TV, for example. Let's talk about television. Um, 3D TV got people very excited. Um, I think it's going to be a while before 3D really becomes important in the, uh, you know, the television marketplace. Because um, the problem is the glasses. And until that problem is dealt with, I think it's going to be a minor sort of sidelight. I think you have a lot of people who will be buying 3D televisions, but simply because those are the best, newest televisions out, out there. Um, so anyway, um, I, you know, that's one of the things that I think is not going to progress all that quickly until we solve the problem with the eyeglasses. Um, on the other hand, um, smart TVs or interconnected TVs, which are a very tiny part of the business right now, I think that's going to be really big. Um, and um, uh, I, I, I see that as something that's going to really address consumer needs and wants. Um, and um, I think in the end, uh, right now, it's causing some consternation in the industry. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, worry about how it's going to affect, uh, you know, television, uh, traditional television. But, um, and obviously there are, there are business issues that have to be resolved um, along the lines here. You know, people have to get compensation when their content is used. Um, from a measurement perspective, you know, we have to figure out how to measure all of that viewing and attribute it correctly. But I think in the end, like DVR, I think it'll end up being more of a friend and a positive force to the industry than a negative one um, once those, those business model sorts of issues are resolved. So I, I, to me, that's one of the more interesting things going on right now. And social media, I think, are going to continue to be um, a, a huge force and just sort of an inherent part the media environment.